I'm excited to bring to you guys this video. Helmet Riser is someone who was revolutionary in dog training. Every dog trainer probably has learned something from this man right here. Helmet Riser has been training dogs longer than a lot of us have been alive. He was revolutionary in the world of dog training. If you're training dogs currently, there's probably something that you know that has to do with Helmet Riser. Helmet Riser is one of the original dog trainers from what I understand, and was one of the original guys to do protection work. He's been around for a long time and probably has been training dogs longer than we've been alive. He has been revolutionary in dog training and has probably helped pave the way for a lot of modern dog trainers like myself. I hope you guys enjoy this one-on-one -on -one interview with me and Helmet Riser. Remember that Helmet Riser is German, so his English is extraordinary to me, but maybe there's some things that he doesn't understand or he is not saying right that might not uh, be the perfect word, but that's not his native language, okay? So bear that in mind. I find him to be very passionate and honest, and we get into everything from dogs to the modern society. The camera quality might not be perfect, but for me, the content was amazing. I got to ask him all the questions in my head that I would wanna ask somebody like that. There is some controversy around him, but at the end of the day, that's because he stands up for what he believes. Someone's freedom fighter is another person's terrorist. I introduce to you guys, Helmer Riser. Thank you and honor to meet you in person. Um, I've read your book and I know you're one of the main guys who's taught Schutzen and probably a lot of trainers right now don't even know that they follow a lot of your principles. Um, I'm sure when your book was written, when, what year was that book written? 79. Okay, so from, <laughs> so from 79, I'm sure so many trainers are using a lot of your principles and don't even know where those principles came from or who taught those principles, right? So I would, I'm, I'm honored to see you in person and I'm really honored for you to invite me into your home so that I can do this interview and maybe help people in dog sports and um, even for myself, this is like a dream to be able to speak to someone like you. So um, let's get this interview started. I hope it goes good and hope <laughs> you don't kill me by the end of it. No, no, it's okay. So what would be your perfect dog character-wise, um, temperament-wise, built-wise? This is something uh, what I'm not looking for because uh, Every dog has a talent. You know, uh, Mr. Ste uh, Stefanitz, the founder of the German Shepherds? It's in my questions, yes. And um, he says um, to, to um, see the talents of a dog and use them uh, is the most important thing. And this is uh, how I uh, contact a dog. Of course, the dog, you know the colors of our RSV 2000? I, I went through them. Yeah, briefly. we have we have green, gray, blue, and red, mm -hmm. and orange, of course. Okay. So, green is prey behavior. Mm -hmm. So, what you need in the in the work with the dog is uh, the prey with the with the booty or the biting yeah, uh, and sure. the calm grip and the attack. These are prey actions. Then you have gray, which is aggression. Mm -hmm. You have to separate between uh, defense and uh, active part. Mm -hmm. yeah? And you have blue, which is um, adaptive behavior. In the past, I said it was avoidance, but it's not avoidance. It's clever, adaptive behavior, how the dog can solve conflicts. Yeah? Okay. And um, the perfect dog is a dog who has, uh, in these three uh, drives, uh, good talents. He needs the... Green for motivation. Whatever you teach a dog um, in our Schutzhund sport is never his drive aim. It's always frustration. Okay. And uh, <laughs> the technique you teach him is always hitting the dog right in the face, yeah? okay. middle in the face. And we make the deal, if you do the shit, what brings me the points, you get your drive aim. Mm -hmm. And there is the prey, the green, um, the most important thing, because you can make the deal, if you do what I want, you get your prey. Mm -hmm. yeah? Can be food, can be a ball, can be something to bite, that's all green, mm -hmm. okay? And then you need, of course, um, a smart dog, which is clever to adapt to 
conflict situations to learn how to deal with this and how to be successful. Okay. Yeah? And this adaptive behavior can be avoidance and run away from this conflict, yeah? can be uh, uh, adaptive behavior to the person and uh, uh, submissive behavior, obedient behavior, this is all blue. We, we went away from the, uh, from the description of the behavior and we put it in colors. And this makes dog sports so easy. And you can teach it. So, and then we have uh, green, blue, and gray. Gray, for example, uh, is um, aggression. And um, you see, uh, Lorenz Freud said there are four motivations. We have hunger, flight, love, and aggression. So hunger, we put on green, Mm -hmm. Prey, <clears throat> uh, hunger, flight, we put on blue, go away from conflicts and make sure that your hardware <laughs> doesn't be, isn't be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And red, of course, is for reproduction, sex. Mm -hmm. yeah? We don't do <clears throat> this in the, um, uh, in the training, but of course in the breeding, mm -hmm. uh, we need dogs which could power, which are healthy and bring good dogs, and um, hunger, flight, love, and aggression is something special, because all these three, they need a drive aim, you see? Mm -hmm. The prey, dog is hungry, wolf is hungry, gets a rabbit, eats mm -hmm. it, and is satisfied, yeah? and uh, if there is an enemy, and the dog uh, goes away from this conflict and has his calmness again, is satisfied. With the sex, when the mating is done, they are satisfied. Different, it's with aggression. Aggression never has a drive aim. Aggression is there if the resources, the first three resources, are not available. Okay. Then you have to put energy in it. Yeah? And this comes from grey. And therefore, the aggression is a very most important part of an animal uh, to survive in nature. Okay. And uh, this is something which uh, makes a special character. And depending to the, now come back to your question, mm -hmm. depending um, to the work you want the dog to do, uh, the blue can be most important, the green can be yes. most important, and the gray can be most important. For our Schutzhund, and this makes this, makes this Schutzhund uh, training so special, we need all three. And you need a dog with a, a high prey drive, with a good resistance against stress, which is gray, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> uh, which is very smart and adaptive in the behavior. So, this dog, for 300 points, never fall from heaven. <laughs> so, yeah. you get a talent which has talent here, or here, or here. And now it's your job, and this makes the training of the dog, so uh, for me it's very interesting, mm -hmm. um, use the talents and support the dog where it has not the special talents. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you want to perform very high, you need a dog which has totally green, totally gray, and uh, totally adaptive behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is this is a dog, which you can use everywhere, and this would be the most, the best uh, character for this. This is also a dog you can take anywhere with you. Everywhere. Yes, of course, because it has good nerves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The problem with our dogs we have in the moment is uh, that there comes lots of circus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you need. Um, a dog which is very active and therefore uh, when the shepherd was in the past uh, the dog number one and now it's a dog, the Malinois, with thinner nerves, higher drives, but a very high adaptive behavior. The yeah. Malinois you're saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it depends on the uh, validation of the test. What if you if you have different tests, you need different dogs or different characters. What do you classify as a dog with good nerve? What describes a dog with good nerve? Well, the good nerves are uh, uh, mostly um, 
combined with a threshold. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you have a dog with very high dry and low threshold, uh, it's it's always stress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's always stress, and uh, then you can have a dog uh, which has uh, very very strong nerves. Maybe he is not uh, sensitive, mm -hmm. and he's too <coughs> too dull to run away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is also not uh, the dog, uh, what you can use and what you, you like to have. Of course, if it's a pet for a house who just has to lay down, it's good if he's sleeping all the time, yeah. but it's not good for the work. Yeah? Yeah. For the work, you need a dog uh, with a high drive, but strong nerves, which is not always um, uh, in hectic mm -hmm. when there comes an attraction, uh, when something is moving, green attraction mm -hmm. yeah? or if something is threatening gray attraction uh, and the dog with good nerves has the option um, to anticipate the situation okay yeah, yeah. Um, I personally find this is my thought process a super super confident dog sometimes doesn't give a warning in aggression so I've found some dogs that I've trained for that have been deemed dangerous mm -hmm. they don't give a warning until it's too late mm -hmm. so there's not really a growl there's mm -hmm. more of like a stare and the general public sometimes they don't know mm -hmm. that this type of dog people think they're the dog whisperer right mm -hmm. oh he's looking at me he wants to get pet yeah and this is the dog that will bite them yeah, yeah. Uh, i find that these dogs are not bad dogs they're just very confident um and because they're confident, they don't give a warning. Does that is that something that uh, you find? Makes I think sense? the character dog is as much uh, different as the character of people. <laughs> okay. yeah. And you find I had such a dog. Uh, he never warned. Uh, he just bites. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was a dog with high prey drive. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, it was a good dog. But uh, I have other dogs. They warn, and. So the problem is mostly not the dog, the problem are the people. They don't respect uh, the, dis agree. the distances of the dog. I and I don't know how it's going on in, in Canada, but uh, here in Germany it's terrible. Every, everybody thinks uh, every dog is a pet. Yeah, yeah. Same in, same in uh, North <laughs> yeah. America. And it's same absolutely in, not. And then when yeah. the dog bites, yeah. for some reason, yeah. uh, they come in the dog's space. The same thing is happening in North America, yeah. where people think that it's their right to say hello to the dog. Yeah, yeah. And they don't know the dog. Yeah. And then the handlers or the owners don't know the dog as well either. Yeah. So sometimes I hear a lot of stories when they come for training. He was good until he's a year. Mm -hmm. And now he's a year and a half. He's showing aggression. It's and normal. It's, it, and it's not even shepherds. We're talking no. like all across the board dogs. But that's absolutely normal that... Uh, <laughs> that sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, it's Go absolutely ahead. normal that drives uh, mature, some later, some earlier. You see, uh, when a puppy is born, he cannot be mated to a female. Mm -hmm. or, uh, it, he needs 12 months until yeah. he matures in these drives. Mm -hmm. And especially the gray, the aggression, uh, matures later. Yes, this makes sense because um, if you see a pack of wolves, yeah, uh, a young puppy uh, must have uh, the option for adaptive behavior, mm -hmm. um, and then he's not killed from the alpha dog, yes. yeah, when he lays down and uh, <coughs> makes submissive behavior, but uh, the, uh, the sexual behavior matures with about one year, mm -hmm. yeah, but the gray, uh, the aggression. Uh, matures normally, so with the shepherds, two, two and a half years. Yes. So and this is, or 18 months, depends on the dog. And this is uh, always the, for the training. The most important part, um, when you want to use aggression, uh, you should uh, train in this, depends on the dog, of course. Mm -hmm. It um, uh, You should work in this part of his maturing, then these conflicts come out in a positive way. You see, conflict either makes avoidance behavior, adaptive behavior, or uh, this is more smart woman's intelligence. Yeah, mm -hmm. If there is uh, a conflict, you, the brain, think how you can manage the conflict to be successful. Mm -hmm. yeah? And man's knowledge <laughs> is conflict. 
<laughs> yeah, like this, and um, is more the gray, the the aggression, mm -hmm. and uh, for the dog, it's worthwhile and healthy <laughs> to be more submissive when it's young, mm -hmm. and when it becomes two years, he can touch the alpha position in the pack. Yeah, okay. and uh, especially in this age, uh, also some good dogs change the handler because they suddenly don't know how to go along if there comes out aggression uh, when they ask something from the dog what he doesn't want. Mm -hmm. you know? So this is normal in the age of 18 months, two years, that they mature this. Yeah. How did you end up in the sport of Schutzen or dog sports in general? End up? How I started? Or how did you start? How did I start? Uh, Or what intrigued you to get into dog sports? Friend of mine, uh, Bud Bellon said, respect always starts with fear. Okay. <laughs> yeah. When I was young, my sister was bitten by a dog and I was quite fearful by dogs <laughs> because I was living in a village and they run around and um, there was uh, a friend, has a shepherd, and uh, he was like my female there in the kennel mm -hmm. and uh, he wants to make Uh, me angry or to shame me. He lets the dog out, the dog jumps on me and I fall down. Nothing happened, but uh, this was the beginning. But I think this was one reason uh, how I uh, was touched in an emotional way with dogs. Mm -hmm. The other thing is my father, he was a blacksmith and he was involved in horses mm -hmm. and he has uh, a very good feeling Uh, for Animals. he had have a very good feeling for for um, horses, and I realized also for my dogs. So I think there is something genetically in me, and uh, when I always wanted to have a dog, and my mother never allowed, until I was 14. and then my father said, "Hey, there in the neighbor village is a litter. Come on, we go there." Yeah. And then my father took a dog for me and my mother yelled. <laughs> and so I had to care for the dog and uh, persuade her that I will care for her. Uh, it was a female. And so it started. And at this time, all the dogs in the village run around. And when she was in heat, she was pregnant because they digged under the kennel and, and uh, I didn't know how to go along with this. <laughs> <laughs> so second, with this second litter, second time uh, she was uh, pregnant and I could not uh, avoid this. Mm -hmm. yeah? So my father says, we will take a male. <clears throat> so and at this time, 60 years ago, it was normal. We went to the uh, hunter and he killed my dog mm -hmm. <laughs> and I got a Doberman yeah? and I want a Doberman because I was in the lexicon. Mm -hmm. A Doberman is hard and uh, unbestechlich, what is this? Uh, uh, and so all oh, these tough, tough dogs. dogs. Tough dogs, yes, yeah. absolutely. Fearless. And uh, I had the good luck when I made an advertising in the uh, newspaper uh, that the champion of Dobermänner was living 15 kilometers away in Hildesheim. And he contacted me, and by him I got a Doberman. And then I trained this dog, and I took books, and I read books, and uh, then I went to a training club, and I had good luck that I came to the training club in Warstedt, where there were good people. <laughs> and I was strong. And this uh, was in the 1960s? It was... I was uh, 66, yes. 1966. Yeah, about this. Uh, and uh, then I took a tent and camped on a training field and trained my dog from the morning to the evening. And the dog always wants to run away because was fed up with all this shit. But yeah. You work, children, <laughs> you must do this. Yeah. But different times than, to, uh, than today. And we have, of course, a very different feeling uh, for the dogs. Um, and um, then comes the first trial, and I got the most points. And there comes an old trainer to me and say, hey, you can become a good dog sportler. Mm -hmm. huh? I looked at him. I said, hey, 
who wins today, he also participated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you talking about? So I, when I was young, I was very gray. Yeah. <laughs> now my hairs are gray, but I'm more polite. Yeah, yeah, it happens with age. <laughs> and <laughs> before, <laughs> I was very gray and I was very tough and uh, I didn't like it if someone tries to beat me. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> competitive. So uh, I met good people. And when I went uh, for studying to Göttingen, my friend Klaus Huber, he died last year. He was my first teacher. Uh, he introduced me here in Göttingen uh, to Günther Wasserhaus and Wolfgang Bechtold. These were my uh, best friends at this time. And as I was strong, I was a helper all the time. And I have learned a lot in uh, my first club in Saarstedt. And when we came here, they had a shepherd, very new, four years old, and they couldn't handle this dog. And this dog was only the kettle, and they give food with a stick. And uh, so, and nobody can bring this dog for barking. I said, hey, 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 every dog barks. <laughs> and then <laughs> they laughed, hey, you can work the dog. So I went. There and uh, at this time we had a box with stones and then the dog came and I was quick, bam, 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 bam. I said, Wah! and I gave him a bite and I said, what's the problem? And now I was a helper in this area. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so we had not the knowledge what we have now, mm -hmm. but in Kassel there was Bernard Menel, an old um, dog handler, very smart, and he was the first who created the terms prey drive and defense drive. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the the problem was before a dog only has to bite. And in 60 something, I think it was 64 or so, uh, they changed the rules that the dog has to bark on the blind. Mm -hmm. So how do you do this if mm -hmm. you have no knowledge? Frustration. Yeah, yeah but you yeah, you try to beat the dog and yeah. you kick them away uh, and with brutal things at the end. Uh, and the strong dogs became stronger and stronger by yeah. this conflict, and the weak dogs, pfft, no. this was a good selection yes. for strong dogs. Yes, I agree. I agree. <laughs> but, uh, it's not, not today's compatible standard. to the uh, to the sensitivity of a uh, population nowadays, yes, of, of the, what we have nowadays. 100%. Yeah? So it happened to me that we had very strong dogs in this club, and I had to clean them. And what we did with, with, with sticks and with uh, chains, we beat on the dog and uh, we were quite successful, uh, but it didn't work. And the strong became always stronger. Now I, Nowadays I know why. Mm -hmm. So, and latestly, when I broke a canine of a dog with a chain, I said, hey. It's not for you. This is shit what we do. Yeah. yeah? Uh, if we make a training, uh, which destroys the dog. It's not training. It's it's something I, I don't I don't like I like this and I don't want to do. So uh, at this time there was Bernard Mendel and he says if you want to make the dog barking when he barks you have to give him a bite a reward. And I was one of his pupils, and uh, so I was full of this good message and I trained this dog, I wrote this book. <laughs> Maybe you read it. I read it. And der, everybody read it. Der Schutz. And it went like a fire through the whole world. And um, I did many seminars and, um, well, we created uh, the new style of dog sport at this time. The grandfather, uh, the, the, the pioneer was Bernard Menel. Uh, then there were Fritz Bieler, uh, Günther Wasshausen, and Klaus Huber. They were the first pupils, and I were the next one. Yeah, and uh, so we spread this message all over the world. Uh, it was funny in our club in Wien. There we discussed every morning, up to in, on Thursday we have always our training group, and when we were sitting three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. Uh, and struggling for the truth in the dog sport, and uh, we fight in a positive way. Mm -hmm. yeah? And always in the morning, eight o'clock, I was in the university and uh, <laughs> kept my eyes open and learned <laughs> medicine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But in the last row, not in the first row. <laughs> and uh, it was a it was a funny time. It was a funny time, and. Um, 
by, and we did lots of trial and error. A lot of critical yeah. thinking. And it took years, 10 years, 20 years, uh, and it never stopped that we get new knowledge. And for me, interesting, well, people who came and learned, they were as good as we were in two years, where we needed 10, 20 years for this. And smart people uh, came and they are, they are now on the top of the world everywhere. Yeah. And uh, so this was a good time. And nowadays, it changed a lot. Um, you see, always the balance is the most important part. We came from here. No knowledge, brutal work with dogs. Yes. Yeah? Then uh, we come uh, to a work which was very successful. And nowadays, everything is happy, happy, happy circus. And there are big mistakes in this um, development. Uh, mm -hmm. I agree. I think we lose the reliability of the dog. Yes. Um, yeah. And yes, you can do a lot with positive reinforcement, but to have actual reliability in a situation, I feel that there needs to be some form of punishment uh, or reinforcement. We, we talk about three levels of learning. Yeah? The first is you must show the aim. And this is plan A, I call it. It's positive reinforcement and once and always mm -hmm. that the dog gets an idea. This behavior brings success, brings drive aim. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So then you can speed up the behavior and make it keep going with intermittent reinforcement, mm -hmm. which is Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. yeah. The hope, the hope, yeah. the hope yeah. that you win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Uh, creates more and more intensity. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. And... Uh, Makes your brain variable reward system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, intermittent reinforcement, and uh, this makes it good. Good, keep going, and um, if you make it smart, uh, you create more drive. Yeah, but the truth, the truth in the work with a dog, is a compulsion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, this decides hop or top. Yeah, and. Um, the secret for all of this is your communication. I, yeah? If the dog understands you hit with a compulsion the point and the dog speeds up in the work. Yeah? If the dog doesn't understand, it's conflict. <laughs> and conflict make two uh, decisions. One is if the dog has good nerves, Kill me, I don't understand, I accept it. Yeah? And the drive is shit. So the other option is you have a dog with much drive and lower nerves, and then he became hyperactive, hyperactive, up, and then he bites you. And when he realizes that biting stops all this shit, yeah? <laughs> then he knows how to go out of these conflicts. <laughs> and uh, this is classical conditioning. Classical conditioning generalizes at once. Mm -hmm. One try, it works. It's different to the instrumental conditioning where you uh, teach techniques and uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something uh, generalizing is a, is a longer t uh, repetition. Mm -hmm. yeah? But uh, the classical conditioning, how, go, how, you, uh, how to use the drives, the dog learns very quick. Yeah? And this is uh, what can happen uh, when you have no good communication, no good understanding, uh, you destroy the dog. Either this way or this way. Yeah? Either the dry goes uh, shit or the technique goes shit. Mm -hmm. yeah? But um, if you have a good communication, then you can hit the point if you have some sensi sensitivity with the compulsion. Mm -hmm. yeah? But the secret of, of, of the training and the dog is compulsion and discipline. And discipline and fairness. <laughs> and then everything's easy. <laughs> a good heart for the dog, yeah? a strong discipline, and a clear communication, and everything is the nicest thing you can um, imagine in life. And I will tell you one thing. Do you know what the big uh, um, advantage of a dog is? Comparing to your wife? They always love you. 
No. What? The dog can talk. <laughs> can <I> talk? <laughs> they, can, they can bark, though. <laughs> yeah, but they cannot talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I always I always tell people that your timing mm -hmm. is impeccable because the communication has to be very clear. Yeah. Um, if your timing is off, mm -hmm. then it's unsureness in the dog's head. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't know what's going on, then how, mm -hmm. like say for marking, mm -hmm. if you're marking a behavior, the timing has to be on or he's confused. Yeah. Um, I always tell people this, but it's nice that I get reassured from somebody who's been in the dog sport since. Yeah. A long time. <laughs> there, there is another very important thing I always uh, tell in my uh, seminars. Um, these uh, plan A, plan B, plan C going through the learning uh, um, um, phases mm -hmm. is important. Then the timing is one of the most important thing. If you want to combine something, put it in between uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 seconds and um, if you want to separate, make a break, break, free the body for five seconds, and the dog learns it's not the body language which makes the action, it's something else. Mm -hmm. And Pavlov. Yeah. First the command, then the body. Mm -hmm. First the uh, command, and then uh, the action. Mm -hmm. yeah? And this is something what goes wrong in the whole uh, dog sport. People have activity with a body instead of a frozen body, and uh, then the dog focus, of course, always the on body the body. The body first. Yeah? Because uh, uh, blah, 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 he only realized tick, 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 but no words. Mm -hmm. So if you want to teach a word, yeah, you have to obey Pavlov. First the word, then the body. Yeah? First the uh, uh, bell and then the food. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And this is something what goes always wrong. So if you have this tool as a handler, that you can freeze your body, give the command, and make the body work the dog, uh, then the dog learns very quick. Yeah. Very simple rules. Just a handful of rules you have to obey and, and you can go along very nice with the dog. You gotta yeah. be good at those rules, yeah. basic rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any other dog sport you're interested in or is there any other dog sport you've been into? No. <laughs> okay, that was quick. <laughs> I just say, go ahead. No, 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 nothing. No, okay. Because because uh, our Schutzhund sport has a tracking. I like this so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, has a tricky obedience. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the uh, the gray you can handle in the Schutzdienst. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so everything is there. What were the dogs like back then, say the German Shepherd back then, the Doberman, the Rottweiler back then, versus what they are like now? Different answer to different races. Yeah? Um, if you talk to the Doberman, this was once a dog which was very nice and with good character and good abilities. And then they bred it in a way for confirmation. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, the whole race is dead. Yeah? Uh, they have heart problems, they have healthy problems, uh, they have uh, mental problems. Uh, so if breed goes uh, wrong ways, wrong way is wrong selection mm -hmm. and too much inbreeding. Yeah? If you lose the wideness of the genetic pool, you get all the shit in breeding, which is uh, less uh, fertilization, which is uh, weaker nerves, which is less healthiness uh, and less fitness. Yeah? And the, do the doberman, by the breeding they have done in the last uh, 20, 30 years, uh, is nearly gone. Yeah? Here and there you find sometimes uh, a doberman who is quite good, but they die also early. Yeah. Nothing like what you're used to. No. I hope, I hope that in foreign countries, maybe Russia, maybe uh, somewhere else, uh, they have still good dormants and um, they will go back to this. But uh, it's always uh, from the politics. Mm -hmm. yeah? 
the politics destroy the dogs. The same in shepherds, yeah. yeah. When the shepherd became uh, a big marketing article and was sold for some hundred thousand euros uh, German marks at this time to foreign countries, it becomes a, a economic thing, mm -hmm. yeah. And then it ruins the uh, mm -hmm. uh, the race. Yeah? Only if the race is selected for work, but it depends on the work. If you select for agility, you will select different dog mm -hmm. than if you select for Schutzhund. 100%. And I had, a, I had a talk years ago uh, where I described uh, what happened over the years of 100 years uh, in the selection of dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning it was a sheep herding. Mm -hmm. And I said this dog needs green, gray, blue. Yeah, has to be obedient, has to be strong enough to uh, uh, fight a wolf of, or uh, discipline a uh, strong uh, 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 male uh, yeah. from sheep. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, they are sometimes quite strong, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and uh, they need to um, have good condition. So then it changed uh, in the middle of the. 1940 and so it was more the protection what mm -hmm. they, what we need and we have no idea of dog training mm -hmm. so we need hard dogs who go through who can keep lots of hard pain and compulsion and they were used for protection and biting and they were not so smart for um, obedience and uh, they had not this adaptive behavior so now we have um, mentality in the society, everything has to be nice and happy and soft. Yeah, and uh, we changed our dogs. And the only thing uh, who selects a working dog is a sport. And the sport uh, started to go in a way that we don't ask for natural work; we ask for Unnatural circus work. work. Yes. Yeah, I agree. You see, for take take the Schutzdienst, a dog shall bite and have a calm grip. Hey, what happens if someone hits you? Are you quiet, mm -hmm. <laughs> or do or do you start to put gray in it? So if you if you put gray in the if the dog puts gray in the biting, you lose points. Yeah, for Schutzen, for Schutzen, yeah, and for IGP. Yeah, well, yeah, and what we train is, uh, we know how train how to train this. Yeah. When I show my female in the trial, uh, and there comes the out phase, she stays there and waits. And I show off <laughs> that my dog has a super signal control. Most of the dog go out when they help us stand there and they say very quick out, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I showed off, yeah? And then I say, yes! and then I Row! change to drive. So mm -hmm. you need clear drive changes nowadays yeah, to get points. But this is not natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, natural is that the dog bites, kills, puts gray in it, if there is a strong uh, prey, yeah? and then uh, he puts the gray to kill, mm -hmm. yeah? so not allowed. Then healing <laughs> in the box. Yeah, Looks nice. No, it looks terrible <laughs> because it's totally stress. The dog is waving the uh, the tail, and <laughs> this is totally stress. And they say that's happiness. No, it's not happiness. Sport is limit. Doesn't matter if you play soccer or something like this. It's always limit, and you have to go to the limits of the nerves uh, to make uh, uh, the dog in this movement. Mm -hmm. But if you have a dog with good nerves, yeah, then. He's concentrated, and the tail is like this, yeah. Mm. But if you go with electricity and with spike collar to the limit of the nerves, then he always, yeah. <laughs> if he has good drives. Mm -hmm. yeah? So, and this is something where our sport goes in the moment totally wrong ways, and the interpretation of the work is so different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we can do this. We make it. Yeah. Electric collar is forbidden, everybody uses, and uh, they pay us for, for our uh, training, but they show off with our results. Yeah? And this is what pissed me off. 
years ago in the SV, where I was always criticizing this. I said, hey, uh, I cannot do something which is a lie. Yeah? If I do this, I can, um, I can argue for this. Yeah? Not everybody, not everybody accept, accepts this argue. Huh? The terrorist for one is the freedom fighter for the other. <laughs> so you cannot persuade all the people uh, for one thing. <laughs> But um, what we do with our training, with our Schutzensport, we select a good, healthy working dog. And this is cultural good. So we take care that we keep this cultural good going. Yeah? And uh, then there comes people who, who always think you must be nice and happy with your dogs. And we had this just here <laughs> in, uh, in my training field. So I watched a woman. She's an animal protector. Okay. Yeah? And she, she criticized uh, that friend of mine uh, puts her dogs in the Cage. trailer. In the, in the trailer. Yeah? Which good temperature and everything. Yes, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Very expensive trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no. she said, no, she, uh, she must uh, not allowed to do this. She has to put all the three dogs together. And uh, well, I went there. I introduced myself <laughs> as, a, as a big dog trainer and a dentist. <laughs> and uh, uh, I told her, I don't like uh, that you say that we are cruelty an animal. And my. Uh, friend i said she was the whole life a um, dog trainer at the police and she knows what she do and then she told this woman well if you pay the uh, the bill for the veterinarian i can let my three females run together <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> i don't want, i don't want to pay the bill <laughs> because they will not survive mm -hmm. not all only one mm -hmm. and um, so the meaning in dogs goes far away but then i told this woman believe me we are the animal protector mm -hmm. because we take care that this super dog this who, who's used uh, for protection who's used for sport who's used for narcotic search for um, 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 service work service work everywhere yeah uh, this is possible because we keep this character going yeah and if we don't do this uh, you mm -hmm. have only pets at home huh? and you miss cultural good mm -hmm. so the interest is different <sighs> this is a big problem no it's no problem mm -hmm. you have to fight for your your interests yeah it's becoming hard well look at look at look at the politics nowadays yeah mm -hmm. they make with you, with you what they want and uh, if we don't uh, stand up and say, we don't want this. They try to rule you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's amazing. It's amazing. Because uh, we thought we live in a democratic uh, state. Yeah? And they do the same, like the uh, uh, same fascism than in uh, other states, yeah? where they argue with. But they do with us. Uh, they take away our ri rights, they take away our healthiness, uh, they have to, uh, they want to uh, uh, tell us how we have to deal with my body. <laughs> they tell me, yeah? and they are no medicine people, they are politicals. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is going to Corona yeah. now. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is everywhere I the guess same. we're all in the same boat here. Uh, yeah, it looks you, like. you think different in dogs than these PETA people or the uh, uh, animal protectors. Uh, uh, everybody thinks he has a right yeah? and there's no tolerance. Mm. Why not? I don't care if someone uh, uh, treats with his dog in a different way. But if they don't understand what uh, we do, they should not argue. I see? Come to me in my practice, look at me. You can stay there and say, hey, he takes a knife and he cuts off a people when I do a surgery. Yes, I do. <laughs> But I know what I do. 
<laughs> and I do good work. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. So it depends how you look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you know what you do, and I'm sure uh, we do a great job with our Schutzhund Sport to um, keep a good dog and healthy dog as a cultural good. Okay. This is why I do it. No, I, I, yeah? I get it. There's and this is, this is why I had a hard fight for years in the SV when I realized this is only a market, a marketing article and power and money were the only values they had. And the dog goes mm -hmm. down the hill. Mm 